You're watching Rock TV. But uh, again, thank you for joining me on. And I, and I, and I just want to be sensitive to your time. Um, I'm assuming that you probably have another interview backed up right against this. Not right against it. So take your time. It's all good. If you if I like the questions, I won't push delete. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You know what? I already love you, Kip. I can already tell this is going to be very, very fun because, you know, I always I always have a little bit of, you know, what are they going to be like? You know, because, you know, some some guys that have been in the industry for a really long time, like yourself, you know, uh, are cool. And then yeah. others are just complete and total assholes, you know, yeah. and it's just like you never know what you're going to get. But I knew you were going to be cool. I knew you were going to be cool. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, the name Kip Winger can precede me in many, many ways. <laughs> It's a, it's a, um, it's kind of an entity in itself that people make up in their minds what they want it to be. It has nothing to do with me. Uh, sure, yeah. sure. There yeah. Are, and there's a lot of aging rock stars, so to speak, that believe they're, you know, believe in their own bullshit. I'm, I ain't one of them. No, well, I tell you what, man, you, you, you've aged very well. I think you look great, by the way. You sound great. Um, you know, just by evidence of what I know is to come with Seven and Proud Desperado. Of course, uh, you know, we had the full opportunity to digest that. And uh, again, everybody, welcome back to Rock Titan. I'm Scotty J, and uh, we have got an awesome guest with us right now that I've been waiting to speak with for a very long time. And by now, I'm sure you gather, we've already, you know, mentioned his name many times. And, you know, he looks the same way now as he did 30 years ago. So, no, Kip no. Winger, yeah! And uh, they got their brand new album coming out May 5th, 7, their seventh studio album. And uh, right now, if you want, a couple weeks ago, Proud Desperado is their single that they just dropped. You don't have any other singles out yet, do you? No, we got one coming soon, but it's not out yet. Okay. All right. All have right. you heard of the album? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I've, I've got my own little teaser, my digital, if you will. So, yeah, I've had a chance to taste the Wait, whole I... thing. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, everybody, you know, you are you are in for a real treat. You really are. I mean, it is classic winger all the way. I mean, it's great. And one of the things, Kip, that I think is really cool, because not a lot of bands that have been around for as long as you guys have, have been able to maintain that continuity and have the same kind of lineup. But between you and Reb and Rod and Paul, like, you, you, you still got the band together, huh? I mean, how special is that for you? It's great for me. You know, the thing is, we're really good friends. Like all, on all the off times that, that we weren't playing, we always call each other, hey, what's up? You know, like yeah. there was never a day or two that went by that we didn't like, I don't know. I talked to Rod almost every, at least every other day. I talked to Reb every other day. Nice. Paul lives down, down the road from me. I just talked to Paul today, John as well. And, right on. And, uh, Paul hadn't been in the band for a while, but I, I really wanted to bring Paul back. Paul's an outstanding musician. The fans love him. And yeah. so on this album, I've made a point to have every guy play on every song. So when you're listening to the album, you'll know that it's all original members. We kind of consider John Roth an original member because he's been in since 92. He, he was, he, uh, he replaced Paul at first when Paul went to do Steve Perry. And then, you know, um, about 2002, we kind of disbanded after pull in 1994, I think. Right. There were like six year period where Rev went and did Alice Cooper and Dawkins and all that stuff. Then we get, we got back together in 2002 as a five piece. And then we did, uh, the next record we did winger four. I invited Paul to do it, but he was busy and, but we've done shows on and off with Paul all along the way. Right. Some four piece, some five piece, but on this one, I was like, okay, let's get everybody together. Let's go back to the old logo. Let's, you know, recreate the vibe, the energy of the first record, but kind of music more sophisticated, a little bit more like pull. And um, let's set the bar as high as we can. And you know, so I, I feel I feel very good about the the record. Um, yeah, we had our setbacks, as did everybody, because we, sure. we started it before COVID. Right. And then that COVID just fucked the world. Yeah, it did. And then, uh, but it, so it took us longer. This album took longer than any other album. And, uh, but, you know, uh, you can work 20 years on a 
on something great and people will go, it's great. Or you can work two years on something that sucks and they'll be like, you shouldn't have spent any time on it. So <laughs> it, took a little longer, it took a little longer, but we're happy with it. Yeah, no, as you should be, Kip. I mean, it's, it's good. It's solid. Seven is really, really solid. So again, everybody, seven's coming out May 5th and, uh, we're going to have, we got the website here for Winger, you know, make sure you check out all the door dates because you guys, I know you're going to be touring like crazy. And I want to talk about a couple of them. Um, but before I get to that, one of the things I thought was really interesting, I was just kind of, you know, coming through the news and stuff like that. And you seem like a really down to earth guy. You know, you seem really cool. So a contemporary of yours. Um, and, uh, you know, so from uh, Queensryche, all right, um, Jeff Tate who we've had on the show before. And I love Jeff Tate. And uh, I know he's got his thing going on right now with Operation Mind Crime, which is interesting because I know that Operation Mind Crime came out the same year as your debut album, Winger. And uh, I thought that was really cool. But um, I didn't realize that. Yeah, 88. Was, that wasn't their first album. How many? No, it wasn't. They? That was, oh God, was it their fourth one? It might have been their fourth one. I think it was that was an incredible piece of work. Unbelievable. Operation Mind Crime. Yeah. So that's what he's doing now. Jeff Tate, he's touring with his band Operation Mind Crime. And I saw him on the cruise. He sounded fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, he does. He, he still sounds really good. But uh, he had a, a really interesting statement that he made today. It was a quote. He said, I've had the bright lights behind velvet ropes with all the VIP treatments one could want. I prefer a small pub in an unknown town with a surprisingly good conversation. And I just go. thought that that was really cool coming from someone like him, you know, who has really had a, a tremendous amount of success in his career, as have you. Um, how do you feel about that? Because obviously you've had all the glitz, the glamour and all the pampering and all that good stuff. But then sometimes I know you guys, you know, just want to get away and be on your own and maybe meet some interesting people, kind of be off the radar a little bit. What are your thoughts on that? I concur completely. I, I don't like uh, all that other stuff. I feel yeah. I'm very shy and I, people sometimes think I'm off putting because I'm so shy. Like I, you know, hang, like I'm a little standoffish cause I'm so shy and they think they wonder if I'm a dick or not, but um, <laughs> I completely agree with that. I'd take one person in a great conversation over, over all the glitz and glam any day. Cause in, you know, I, in, uh, I consider myself a musician. I, I don't really consider myself like a rock star or any of those. I mean, look, Bono is a rock star. I mean, you know, like, you know, right. I'm not confused about the latitude within the, uh, the I, you know, reside. And, um, and I'm, I'm perfectly happy being a, a student of music and doing, uh, writing music and producing music that is of a certain level. And, Whoever can, you know, kind of like acclimate to it, awesome. You know, I'm not out to please everybody. I do my thing. I've certainly had enough, my share of haters. And uh, it's never deterred me from, you know, um, getting a Grammy nomination in classical composition. So, Right on, um, man. That's so cool. So you still consider yourself a student of music? You, you still find that uh, you're still learning new things, implementing things that you learn into your music? Oh no! I just had a composition lesson on Tuesday with my with my uh, very good friend and mentor Richard Danielport, who's a, I mean, he's in the top five American composers, wow. classical music, you know. Because um, I don't know if you know, I have a, like a adjacent career as a as a classical composer. So right on, uh, yeah. So yeah, no, I'm I'm all about learning. I come from a long line of professors on my dad's side, and it's all okay. this, you know kind of everybody's got a doctorate degree vibe and and um and it's in my blood to just you know want to know more but, but more more most particularly i'm just fascinated with how music is. um i'm hearing sounds in my head that i haven't been able to achieve yet so it's kind of like all right well you know how am i going to learn it you're not going to learn these particular sounds by jamming so i have to I'm pretty diligent about studying music and stuff. Um, and by the way, I mean, I don't recommend it because it's kind of one of those things where if you can live without it, don't do it because it's quite torturous. But 
Um, That's what my daughter tells me. Yeah, she's a music music education major at Westchester University right now. She wants to be a music teacher one day, and uh, mm-hmm. she's going through music theory and all that stuff. <laughs> She she has a beautiful voice and she loves singing, but it's it's like you know it's it's when you start getting into the books and the true you know nuances of everything. Oh yeah, it's a bear. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, um, I've taken it all in an interesting uh, kind of progression. I was self taught <laughs> with my two brothers. Learned self taught. Played. My parents were in a band. They taught us how to learn songs off the record. Yeah, cool. played, you know, we played every elementary school, junior high, high school, clubs. And then I went to New York and waited tables and lucky to get the Alice Cooper gig. And then, uh, you know, kind of it all went from there. Yeah, that's awesome. So, you know, you got professor in your blood. One of the things I want to get to is a, uh, uh, a cruise that you're going to be on here in the not too distant future that I know you've been on many, many times. I have not. I've never been a real big cruise guy, but Monsters of Rock, man. I mean, I look at all the bands on that, and I'm just like, oh, my God. You know what? I may just have to suck it up and, and hop on that ship, you know, because it looks like a really good time. I, I, I poo-pooed it at first, too, dude. I went out on yeah. my first cruise, and I was I would stick pretty much stuck in my cabin moping the whole time and thought, you know, fuck this. And then I and then I kind of came out and and just discovered the glory of the rock cruise it's amazing i i freaking love it it's so awesome and i'm very loyal to the monsters of rock cruise because it's it's all rock bands you know it's not it's not like a themed cruise with all the all the types of music from a certain era or something like that it's like rock bands you know right on Um, right on yeah the guy that runs the guy that runs it's fantastic and 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 uh Fans are great, and you know we love it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, so I was I was going through your page, checking out some of your videos, just to see if I could get a little tidbits on what's going on. And uh, I noticed you were talking about uh, there was uh, you know some of the more memorable moments you know that you've had, and you had mentioned that you know one of your particular memorable moments was that of a judge. So you think you can shred? On the Monsters yeah. of Rock cruise. Now, obviously, they've only got so many people that can be on that boat. It's probably I would imagine by now, beans that it's in May. It's probably already booked. Yeah. I mean, do you do you know if it's already booked? It's gotta be. It's gotta be sold out. I mean, yeah. there might be a couple cabins left. I don't I don't know. Yeah, so I'd I'd be a stowaway if I were trying to get on that at this point. You might but, be able uh, to get on. Who knows? I don't know. I mean, yeah. Maybe. But so you're a judge, right? For so you think you can shred. And uh, you had some some surprising things to say. Is that anything that you can divulge, or is that something that's more private? Oh, no, just... oh, yeah, no, sure, sure. I'm well known as the Simon Cowell of you, so you think you can. <laughs> the the judges on that, in my opinion, are way too forgiving. You know, it's people trying to play their guitar and stuff, and they're nice, and and I'm just kind of like, dude, that sucked. You got to <laughs> quit your day job, but. It's all in good fun. I mean, I, you know, I'm, uh, I was just being honest the first time it happened. You know, I just thought Man, these guys were all like, they're just kissing this kid's ass. I mean, right. I'm not telling the truth, you know? Oh my God, that's too fun. Now, has there ever been anyone that particularly blew you away? Where you're like, oh, Reb, yeah. See ya, man. We're getting his kick, man. Has, has anyone ever no, like, been... impressed you? Sure, there've been there there've been a few people on there that can play really well. It's a fun thing because it, people just kind of do it to. It's all a lark, but I mean, some of them, you know, I'm sure some people buy a ticket on Monsters of Rockers just because they want the competition because the winner gets <laughs> a star and an amp and stuff and a trophy. But uh, you know, it's 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 all in good fun. I like to I like to partake in the festivities on the cruise. Sure, I do I do more than most and and. <laughs> I'm always in the, the the casino gambling as well. So, um, yeah, it's fun. Right on, man. Right on. Now, I, I got to ask you, as a professional musician and, and the people that you've just had the opportunity to work with and meet and tour and just the whole nine, do you have a particular, if I, if I had to put you on the spot, I'm putting you on the spot right now, anyone that you think is like the number one shredder of all time? shredder 
Yeah. See, that's that's an interesting point because when you're talking about shredding or guitar playing, not Eric Clapton. Yeah, right. So shredding, shredding. Well, I shredding, mean, shredding. Like Steve Vai, know, Joey Satriani. Well, I was just about to say Steve Vai. Um, Anymore. But I consider Steve Vai so much more than a shredder because he's he's. I know Steve well, and he's quite the genius. He's very literate at orchestral music, and absolutely. And, and the thing about Steve's playing is he's so f- musical; it's like mind blowing. But musical on a very rare level. I mean, he takes it into a whole other realm musically. Like he's, well, I could go on about Steve Vai. I, I actually. On my YouTube channel that doesn't have too many subscribers, um, I'd started this thing, Conversations with Kip Winger, because I was interested in talking to some of my colleagues and stuff. So there's one interview on there with Alan Parsons. And there's and I did one with Steve, and I don't have a lot of time to get to them. But the one I did with Steve is in three parts, and, and, and it really shows who Steve is. Anyway, I could go on. And on oh, and man, on. no, I'm going to have to share that. Yeah, no, I'll share that for sure. i got to go check that out. I haven't seen it, but I definitely would love to. That'd I haven't really posted cool. it. I, I, I'm so lame. I did it almost a year ago, and I still haven't posted it. I just got it all edited and stuff. But, um, man, I wouldn't I, – I can't say that I do have a favorite shredder. Um, uh, if I was just going to say just pure shredding energy that blows my mind, I might go with like Zach Wild. Okay, right on, man. Yeah. Or, or um, because we opened for Ozzy one time when Zach was in the band back in the day, and I, yeah. I watched it. We it was a short lived thing because Ozzy canceled the tour, and I watched it. I watched Zach every night, and I was just gobsmacked by his abilities. I'm absolutely incredible. The Viking. Yeah, he's a good one. What do you think about him with Pantera? Any thoughts? Oh, I'm totally out of the loop. Is he he playing with Pantera right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he and Dimebag and yeah. um, You know, I mean, so he's obviously trying to honor the memory of Dimebag, you know, and, 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 you know, Bill and Salmo is still obviously the front man. Don Bag was a beautiful human being, man. Yeah, that's what he, I understand. I never met him, but that is what I've heard. He was very, very. Uh, he he kind of saved my life one night in Japan. Oh yeah, it's a whole nother story. But yeah, um, do tell. Yeah, that, that sounds like a perfect a perfect match. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm trying to think of other guitar players. I mean, deceased or alive. I mean, Eddie Van Halen. I mean. Right. Yeah, no, well, there's a lot. No, I, I I put you on the spot. I just didn't know, you know, because, again, so you think you can shred. So I was just kind of pulling from that, just thinking well, if there's anyone well, that you've ever had in your mind in particular, like, you know, this guy sets the standard, you know, this guy kind of sets the benchmark. And, you know, there's probably a lot of people that are, you know, right there with them, not to say, you know, 1A, 1B or anything like that. You know, they're all ones. But if there was anyone in particular that kind of, you know. Steve Vai, man, he's he's yeah. so he's there. I don't think anyone's on par with Steve. I mean, my favorite guitar player, um, w- one of my top three favorite guitar players of all time is Andy Timmons. I mean, he's just absolutely unreal. I mean, and I'm dying to work with him. We've been trying to work together for a long time. He played on all my solo albums. Okay, but he's not like a shredder. I mean, you know, Zach will sit there and play. I actually like Ingve's playing a lot, and and I know Ingve is a controversial figure in the music <laughs> business. But I actually think that I think that um, Ingve is actually, I mean, obviously he's a great guitar player. Sure. Everybody knows that, but I think I think there's a lot more than meets the eye when it comes to Ingve's playing. Um, and by the way, I go, you know. I need to I need to go into Instagram rehab because I do surf re uh, I do look at Instagram a lot and I see young guitar players that are blowing all these guys away. I mean, they're like there's just there's a whole new faction of young kids that have learned everything that we've all done and more, and they're all like freaks of nature, man. So the it's, whole the whole thing is evolving, you know. Yeah, no, I mean, you bring up a good point, and it's almost like. Because you came up with so many musicians that were still 
kind of inventing, if you will, you know, certain styles of play and figuring out new things. You almost have to wonder, um, you know, with the guys like Steve Hackett and Eddie Van Halen, um, you know, I mean, the, the list is, you know, dime bag, you know, all these guys that, you know, would have very unique styles of play, maybe creating some new lick, you know, whether it's, you know, finger picking or whatever they're doing, you know, masterfully so on the fretboard, you know, is there any room left for musicians coming up now to kind of create something that they can make all their own, kind of have their own signature, their own trademark, or, you know, are they basically all at this point just forced to build on that of, you know, what everyone had done before them. I don't know. That, that's an excellent question. And every once in a while, somebody just comes out of the blue and does their own thing like that. And it's just so different than everybody. I mean, you know, Jeff Beck. I mean, but, um, yeah. I don't know. But having said that, you know, I don't spend a lot of time listening to that kind of thing. I'm, I'm deep into my classical music stuff and, and listening to that from a composition point of view. So I don't, I, I gave up long ago look, trying to become a great instrumentalist because I um, it wasn't important to me. Um, writing music and 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 creating it is it was is really everything that I'm about. Like I never practiced my bass or anything because I, I'll never be Billy Sheehan and and uh, it's not it's not appropriate for the kind of rock music that I do. Sure. But you're solid. You're so, so that being said, you know, obviously you're bass player, you lead singer of Winger, um, you know, and, and there's a lot of lead singers out there that are bass players. You know, they, they do that. I'm you're just right off the top of my head because we've hosted him so many times. Doug Pinnock from King's X. He's a great one. Love him. I love his voice. I love his bass playing. You know, Gene Simmons, you know, of course. And, you know, there's many, many more where that came from. Um, is there well, anyone in particular that, uh, you know, you kind of... Uh, have looked to is either a mentor or someone that you respect, you know, a great deal as a, what you would consider a proficient bass player and singer? Oh, I mean, you know, there's tons of them. Getty Lee. I mean, come on. Like, sure. Uh, I mean, that's, I was going to say, like, there's lead singers and then there's lead singer musicians. And it's a totally different breed. Like I sang lead for Alan Parsons, uh, in 2003 through for a year and a half or so and i was out without an instrument and it was a, it was a great honor to be in his band i'm a huge fan and it was incredible but um it's totally a different thing i mean i'm way more comfortable playing and singing paul mccartney sting yeah. getty lee um All right. peter peter Cetera. yeah yeah oh uh, my gosh yeah wow wow okay um uh, I mean, I, I'm a huge Doug Pinnock fan, been King's fan, D King's X fan forever. I don't know if you ever heard a record called The Mob that I produced with Reb Beach and Doug Pinnock on bass and vocals. Really cool album. All right. Yeah. Nice. I got a chance to be in the studio with Doug and Hang. Um, uh, Very cool. And, and um, but anyway, so those are the those are the guys. I mean. I'm sure I could think of a couple more. As far as bass playing goes, uh, Mel Shocker from Grand Funk and oh. Dennis from Alice Cooper, top, top influences. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Now, I know you're, you've are you said it, you know, just since we've been talking, Kip. And again, everybody, we're here with Kip Winger. And uh, Winger has a brand new album coming out May 5th, 7, 7 studio album. And, um, you know, right now they have their uh, solo, Proud Desperado, or their, their single that's out there right now, Proud Desperado. Uh, so go check that out. And uh, there's going to be some more coming down the pike. But um, getting back to just your overall appreciation for music, one of the things I thought was really cool that you shared uh, on your page um, not too long ago, um, uh, who was it? It was, uh, her name was uh, Carrie Walgren. She did a cover from, uh, uh, for a, uh, down incognito off your pool album. No, you heard that. No, it's yeah. Surprising. Yeah, man. I mean, that was so wild because obviously it's just such a different arrangement and style. It's, it's pure jazz, you know, versus what you did. Um, what are your feelings, you know, when you have 
a, a musician come and, and do a cover of something that you wrote and, uh, you know, just put such a unique spin on it? How does that make you feel? Oh, it's it's a great honor to have people do that. I mean, um, and, I, and it hasn't happened a lot. You know, our music kind of like fell through the cracks because we're kind of in the middle of things. Um, and and I do an acoustic uh, show where I play all the winger hits and all my solo stuff. Mm -hmm. And it really gives you an idea of, of the of where the what the songwriting is like, because you can reduce it down to an acoustic guitar and it still holds up, you know, but um, that, yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I just found out there's like a winger tribute band in Japan. So God, that's wild. Do, do they sing in English or do they sing in Japanese? You know what I don't know. I my I I just saw it the other day and I didn't have a chance to dig in because I've been so busy. But, um, you know, a lot of I you know one thing about the rock side of it is a lot of bands have tried to do seventeen covers, but they can never actually get the music exactly right because it's much more difficult um, than it appears to be. Like to play and sing it, and so. Um, That's an awesome video, by the way, and, and and I do want to talk about that, and I want to be sensitive to your, your to your time at the same time, Kip, because I know you got to get rolling here. But man, your videos, specifically like off the Winger album, uh, your debut album, awesome, man. And seventeen is just oh god. I mean, I've I've listened to it a thousand times. I know every Winger fan in the world has listened to that a thousand times, you know, headed for a heartbreak, you know, I mean, uh, hungry. Oh my God. You know, I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty awesome stuff. But, um, one of the things I, I, I gotta ask you about this. Are you familiar with the Netflix series, Stranger Things? Sure. Okay. So, you know, I, I always try to do this with my guests, you know, if, if it's the right fit, you know, I mean, if, if the opportunity... I don't know. I watched the first season. I haven't seen it since. Just disclaimer. Okay. All right. Well, you know, basically, the, it's it's very you know, science fiction, thriller, and all that. But the, the premise is that it's set in the 80s. You know? Right. It, it, so it starts out kind of like in early, mid-80s, and we're still there. So they're coming out with season five this year, and yeah. um, it's set in, like, 1988. and. Cool. So season four, um, it, it ended on um, one of the things that was so cool about it and, and everyone went nuts is because it was set the year Master of Puppets came out from Metallica. So they, you know, they had this rocker on the show, you know, and everything. And, uh, you know, he, he starts just rocking out, you know, and like the netherworld, like truly like you know he's like in some alternate universe and he's playing master of puppets and it just it was so amazing you know to it, it was just that sense of nostalgia you know that takes you back but now i'm thinking okay so that was like 1986 now we're coming up on season five 1988 Ooh, what happened in 1988 i'm thinking man i think winger needs to be on the soundtrack of Stranger Things. I think that absolutely has to happen. What would you think of that? That would be fantastic. Are you crazy? I mean, I love that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to pitch the music director of one of my tunes. Well, I mean, I don't think they've started filming yet. I don't think they've even started filming season five yet. So somehow, some way, everybody, you know, be a character in the in the show. I'll go back in time. That that would be cool. <laughs> how no, cool? I'll, how cool would that be? them from the future yeah <laughs> That'd be well with cgi yeah, now so and everything funny. like that my god i mean you know you see like actors and you're still a young man but uh you know like they'll take you know mm -hmm. like older actors um and somehow project them to what exactly they looked like like 50 years ago you know and you're looking at it and you're like oh my god like i'm th like jeff bridges and tron you know, and, and when they did the Tron remake, you know, they have like the older Jeff Bridges, but then they have the young Jeff Bridges. It's like, oh, my God, how they do that? You know, and uh, anyway, I'm a geek like that. I'm into all that stuff. But um, yeah, we got we got we got to get winger on Stranger Things, I think. But, uh, you know, you talk about going back in time. One thing's that one of the things that impresses me about you, Kip, and then I'll let you get going here, is how you stay in shape, how you've managed to keep yourself so spelt. Because I noticed I noticed um, you know, 
the way you spin. I, I don't know if there's a front man that spins around on stage like you do, other than the way Michael Jackson did it back in the day. But you know what I'm talking about. Like, you are able to just, and you still do. Like, how? Man, how? I, how? Well, because I would, I would fall down. I have no equilibrium. Everybody knows I studied ballet for the for the longest time, and uh, so I can I can spin around and stuff. But uh, man, I'm just dedicated workout guy. I get up every single morning and hit the gym every single morning, and I you know I have a whole dietary thing that I do not because I want to. I'm allergic to a lot of foods, so I'm, oh okay, yeah, I've got a lot of weird food allergies that are kind of unusual, but. Um, Man, I, I, you know, all through my 40s and 50s, I was porking it pretty good, man. I just, uh, end of my 50s, I started getting my shit together a little bit more. Yeah, my uncle always warns me. He's like, Scotty boy, you know, that's what he always called, Scotty boy, you know. When you get on the other side of 40, you know, you need to t start taking your diet seriously because it is not easy to keep those pounds off, you know. I mean, you got to watch portion control and everything else. I'm living proof. I, I mean, I for me, I, I and I can attest to this firsthand is that when you quit eating crappy food, you quit craving it. And so the body heals itself very amazingly. And so if you just if you just kind of get on a routine and hang for a couple months, you just you just start not missing the crappy stuff, you know. Yeah, right on. There's a couple, there's a couple food killers that are just you know they'll put you on a highway to hell, and I just I just push them away the best example mean. the best example of this in the rock world is bobby rock and bobby has a has a powder that he developed called dragon dirt <laughs> uh, i take it in my morning in, in one of my shakes and uh it's it's extremely nutritious bobby's been a vegan now i'm not a vegan i'm a meat eater but bobby's been a vegan for since since it was impossible to do it and he's he's and he's really built no fat guy's amazing and he's very <laughs> He's a really incredible human being, super intelligent. I mean, but anyway, check out his dragon dirt. Okay. It's a great, and uh, hit the gym religiously and then, you know, quit eating crap. Right on, right on. Now, uh, you know, final thoughts. We got some tours coming up for Winger. All right. We already talked about the Monsters Rock Cruise. So, uh, you know, maybe I'll be a stowaway. I don't know. But, uh, you know, people can probably check that out. And I know that you're going to be gone with Steel Panther over the UK. That's uh, Those guys are wild. I love hanging out with, uh, you know, Mike Starr and, and those dudes, Satchel. Those guys are nuts. And uh, I know you also are going to be going out with uh, later in the spring with Tom Kiefer and John Karabi. And, uh, of course, over the years, you've, you've toured a bunch with Cinderella. <laughs> So uh, how, how forward are you looking at these tours coming up? Oh, it's going to be great. I mean, uh, I mean, I love the Steel Panther guys. You know, they're they're awesome. I think that's just a great pairing. The yeah. UK thing is almost sold out. We have, uh, you know, the Tom Kiefer thing. We had one of our best tours with was uh, Cinderella Winger Bullet Boys. It was awesome. Yeah. And we're going to Australia in uh, September and Japan in September. So, um Busy schedule. I mean, it's a little terrifying to sing all this stuff, you know, nonstop, but I can still do it. And uh, when I can't, I'm going to quit because I ain't going to be one of those guys you're looking at going, he can't do that anymore. But, uh, I know. you know, yeah, I mean, the, the only thing I'm worried about is making sure the vocals are happening. And then other than that, I could do eight shows a week. No problem. Right on. Now, can Winger fans look forward to you doing uh, much music off of Seven, or do you kind of stay, you know, with some of your older music and maybe throw in a couple of new ones here and there? What's uh, what's the, uh, you know, what's the sound list look like? Good question. I mean, we'll do a few, I'm sure, starting with Proud Desperado. I mean, we'll roll them out as it as it goes. Um, because we've had so many singles, you know, you have to do those. And it depends on if we're opening for someone or if we're headlining. So um, it'll be all of the above. All right. Any any more official music videos to go along with Proud Desperado? I got I got five more in the can. Oh, right on. Yeah, right, right on. Very cool. Well, Kip, thank you, man. Thank you so much for your time joining me on the Rock Titan podcast. And everybody, if you have enjoyed this podcast with yours truly and Kip Winger, every bit as much as I know you have, um, show us some love. 
And uh, we're going to be showing all the links to everything that's Kip, that Kip's talked about. And, uh, you know, we he's got a channel of his own, apart from the Winger YouTube channel. Show that some love. Go check that out, because he's going to be doing some really cool interviews out there. And, uh, you know, he's got some great solo work going on as well. So uh, go out, show your love, show some support. And if you haven't already pre-ordered Seven, make sure you go out and do that, because I've already had a taste of it, and it's great. It really is. Yeah, so, thanks, uh, yeah, Kip, thank you again for joining me, man. It's been uh, it's been a blast talking to you, man. It really has. We'll have to do it again. Okay, we'll see you soon. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, man. All right, everybody, I'm Scotty J. You are watching Rock Titan. We're out. Bye. Thanks again for watching. Please remember to subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can also catch us at www.rocktitan.tv.